In this section, we're going to discuss the elasticity of supply. Now here, the elasticity of supply is very, very similar to the elasticity of demand in, along many points. Um, first, in, in terms of the definition, the price elasticity of supply measures how responsive the quantity supplied is to changes in price, very much like how the price elasticity of demand measures how responsive the quantity demanded is to changes in price. Just here, we're talking about suppliers and their response. The formula is also virtually identical. That is, the price elasticity of supply, which we denote as eta s, is equal to the percentage change in the quantity supplied divided by the percentage change in price along any particular supply curve. Once again, absolutely identical to the price elasticity of, of demand, just putting supply in instead. Now where there are differences is when we look at the influences on the elasticity of supply. Here there are really just two primary factors. The first one is the ease of increasing production. Here we can think of, say, a good like land. The supply of land we would expect to be extremely inelastic. That is, even if the price of land doubles, we don't expect for there to then be twice as much land provided on the market. After all, land is extremely difficult to produce. Now, we do know it is possible to do things like you know, knocking mountains into harbors to create some additional acreage, uh, but this is not something we would normally consider doing, even if the price of land went up quite a bit. Um, on the other hand, we have other things like iTunes songs. One could argue that the supply of a particular song on iTunes is almost perfectly elastic. And part of the reason for that is that for us to produce another copy of an iTunes song actually takes virtually no work on the part of, say, Apple. And all they do, they provide a button for you to click, you click it, you pay them 99 cents, and the new copy is actually made right at that point. So iTunes songs, it's very easy to first increase production. Land, it's very difficult to increase production. As a result, the supply of land will be very inelastic. That is, as the price changes quite a bit, we tend not to see very large quantity changes. Where with iTunes songs, if we get a relatively small change in price, we see a huge change in the quantity that is supplied. The second would be the time period of production. For example, we might think of something like housing. With something like housing, it is very difficult to increase the quantity of housing available immediately. After all, it's going to take a certain amount of time. Um, but as time passes, we can increase the quantity of housing on the market. It just takes time to build it. Or to put it another way, um, suppose that we think of something like a can of green beans, and there's a huge spike in the demand for green beans. Well, what's going to happen immediately? Well, immediately there probably won't be actually virtually any change in the quantity supplied. After all, it takes some time for us to can more green beans, for us to transport them from wherever they are to wherever the market has changed, and so on. So in the immediate run, we're going to have very inelastic supply. However, allow for a little bit of time to pass, and now we have time to, say, ship green beans from other parts of the world where they're relatively cheap to the place where they've become more expensive. So supply is a bit more elastic. We're more responsive to price changes as a little bit of time passes. Allow even more time to pass, and then we have time to, say, get through a growing season. So we can go ahead and plant and harvest more green beans, can them, and get those to market as well, allowing for even more elastic supply. That is, suppliers are even more responsive to price changes over the very long term. Right, so it's really just these two factors. How easy is it to increase production? And then tied to that is what's the time period of production like? Right, are we looking at a very, very short term or perhaps the immediate term? Or are we looking at a more long term effect? Now let's turn to looking at how elasticity affects changes that we see in markets. So, for example, as demand shifts or supply shifts, what does that do in the market? And also we could look at changes in expenditure or revenue. First, let's look at a demand shift, comparing two cases. In the first case, we'll have elastic supply. In the second case, inelastic supply. Here, we know they're not extreme cases. These are just cases where more elastic or more inelastic. Now let's have demand shift. Let's say the demand increases or shifts to the right. So we have our second demand curve after that increase in demand. Now when we look at the case of elastic supply, we notice that our equilibrium has shifted such that there's a relatively small change in prices, but a huge change in the quantity. And this actually makes a certain degree of sense. After all, elastic supply suggests that a relatively small change in prices is enough to convince suppliers to provide a lot more of the good. 
So we get small changes in prices and relatively large changes in quantities if supply is elastic. On the other hand, if supply is inelastic, we tend to see exactly the opposite. We get a very large increase in prices with a relatively small increase in quantity that is provided. And this, once again, makes sense. If our suppliers are not very responsive to changes in prices, then if there's an increase in demand, prices are going to have to change a lot to convince suppliers to produce any more of the good to meet that demand. Now let's think about supply shifts. Now here it's the elasticity of demand that really determines the relative change of prices and quantities. So on the left we have elastic demand, where demand is relatively flat. On the right we have inelastic demand, where demand is relatively steep. Then we increase supply in both cases. What happens? Well, here on the left, we see that with elastic demand, we get a relatively small drop in prices, and that's enough to induce a lot more people to buy the product, so an a large increase in quantity. On the other hand, if demand's relatively inelastic, we get a relatively large change in prices with a small change in quantity. Once again, this all flows very directly from the definition of demand and, you know, and elasticity. After all, we know from demand that the lower the price, the more people are going to tend to buy, all else equal. We know from elasticity that if demand is elastic, people are very responsive to small changes in prices. So a small drop in prices leads to a large change in quantity. Whereas if demand is inelastic, we know we need a large change in prices, and even that will still only result in a small change in quantities. Turning finally to expenditures, or revenue. Suppose the supply of gasoline declines. Now we know from what we've said before right, that this is going to increase price and decrease quantity. After all, gasoline has become more scarce, there's less available to be traded, so quantity, quantity decreases. This increase in scarcity also tend to increase the price. But the question is which one of these wins? Is the price going to go up more or is the quantity going to fall more? In this case, we can make a pretty strong argument that demand is inelastic. This is not shocking. If the price of gasoline goes up, I'm going to buy almost exactly as much gasoline as before. So, that being the case, quantity isn't going to change very much. So we get a very small decrease in quantity with probably a large increase in price. As a result, this higher price is going to be tied to higher expenditures, or higher revenue. So we would expect then, if the supply of gasoline declines, for whatever reason it becomes more difficult for us to produce gasoline, we end up with higher expenditures on gasoline. That is, the price will go up enough that people are actually spending more total on gasoline than they were before, even though they're buying less of it. This is actually why uh, many think that high gas prices have bad macroeconomic effects. Uh, after all, if people are spending all of their money on gasoline, which is something for which their demand is quite inelastic, that money has to come from somewhere, which means people are either having to go into greater debt to buy that gasoline, or they're having to cut back on expenditures elsewhere in the economy, which that naturally has negative economic consequences for people in those industries that are being affected. So, put very briefly, high gas prices mean that people spend more on gas, which means they spend less on everything else. So now wrapping up this series on elasticity. Um, first, elasticity provides us with a measure for the sensitivity to prices. Right? Are we very sensitive to changes in prices, or are we not very sensitive to changes in prices? Secondly, the elasticity of demand and supply impact how shifts in supply or demand change price and quantity. And finally, the elasticity of demand really impacts how price change affects business revenue and also consumer expenditure.